How many case studies do I need in my portfolio? What should they contain? Is it worth all that writing if hiring managers don't read them anyways? Let me float an idea past you that you might find interesting. Welcome back team to this week's episode of Design Today. I'm your host, Dylan Winspear. And today I wanna to introduce you to a new portfolio concept that I've been working through over the last couple weeks. Before I do that, of course, I need to give a moment to remind you that coaching sessions are 25% off this month when you use the promo code BDAYGIFT at checkout. Yes, I just had my birthday this last weekend and I wanted to give you all something for all that you've given me on this podcast over the last two years. If you're stuck in your career or unsure how to take the next steps forward, allow me to help you get you unstuck. I'll bring my 10 years of experience to the table and together we can work through the tough issues. To sign up for that hour long coaching session, visit designtoday.com and click on the courses tab. There's also a lot more that Design Today has to offer as well. If you've signed up for the email list in the past, you'll notice that, hey, you've not yet received any emails. Well, that's twofold. First, I don't wanna be the guy that gets unsubscribed because he gets too annoying. So until I had a good idea of what I wanted to do with the email list, I didn't wanna start spamming you. Second, it's taken me a few months to figure out what's a good newsletter gonna look like. So with that said, I've got something brewing that you might enjoy. So keep your eyes out uh, come this October. Until then, enjoy the Design Today Slack channel. I continually receive a ton of individual messages on Slack, and I also wanna encourage you to get to know the other 200 designers who've joined. Come and drop a line in the Design Today Slack channel. Finally, I've got one rather large announcement that I need to make and break it to you now for the first time. Come this October, I'll no longer be posting the Design Today podcast to YouTube. And instead, I'll be delivering the episodes in purely audio form. That means if you wanna to continue to catch all the upcoming rants and guest interviews, you'll need to subscribe to Design Today on any of the popular podcasting apps on the market. If podcasting is still not your thing, let this be the time to break into it. 2020 has already thrown everything you've known for a loop, so what do you have to lose? Check out Design Today on the iTunes podcast app, Spotify app, Stitcher app, Google Podcasts, and any other place you get your podcasts. If you already subscribe and listen to the audio version, no changes are there to announce for you, but maybe instead you could consider giving Design Today a rating and review. You're not gonna wanna miss my upcoming guest episodes as I've got great guests lined up for you, including James Martin, a brilliant logo designer in the UK, Yuana Telenu, UX manager and founder of UX Goodies on Instagram, one of the largest UX accounts, Jared Spool, maker of awesomeness at Center Center, a school in which he co-founded, and Tori Podmajerski, author of the bestseller, Strategic Writing for UX. All these great guest interviews will be coming up in the next few weeks, so subscribe to be notified when they're released. All right, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into this already. Over the last few weeks, I've done a handful of coaching calls, which I've reviewed your resumes and portfolios, and I've noticed a couple of common themes continue to pop up. A question in which many of you may have yourself, how many case studies do I need to have in my UX portfolio? This question is the culmination of many other questions I'm sure you've had as well. Like, can I show my schoolwork or is it better to show just professional work? Or what if I don't have a lot of professional work to show? Or what if my professional work skipped a lot of the steps in the UX process? To that last question, I've been thinking about it a bit over the last few weeks. What if your professional work you've done cut some corners, maybe to get a quicker end result? Maybe it wasn't your decision to cut those corners. Maybe your client didn't have the time or the budget. Maybe your company just doesn't facilitate a portion of the process and therefore to move forward to the next step, you may have skipped something. There are a hundred reasons why the ideal process may not have been followed in your professional work. And truthfully, that's neither here nor there, it happens. What matters now is that you're creating your portfolio and everything you read about constructing case studies shows that you should touch on some of the primary parts of the process that you may have skipped. For example, let's say in your three case studies found in your portfolio, you don't have an example of creating a persona because in these three projects you're showcasing, a persona wasn't the right tool for the problem. Or another scenario, what if your case studies don't showcase a diverse set of research abilities, i.e. focus groups, surveys, user interviews, all missing from your projects? What do you do? I'm gonna insert my opinion here and recommend that you don't fake that step into your project. Why? Because first, it's a lie. And when you get into the interview and start talking about the project, it will soon become very apparent that it's a lie. Second, it's probably not going to flow naturally. You probably won't be able to talk through it and connect the dots like you would if you, know, you just told the truth about the project. So don't, don't consider lying in your project just to fake a few steps into it. 
So then you're left with a problem of three case studies and key traditional parts of the process missing. What do you do? I'm going to introduce you to this idea that I've been going through called micro case studies. As far as I'm aware, I've not heard anyone teach this before, and therefore I could be <laughs> completely off base and wrong here. But this is what I've been thinking about here. In my hypothetical case studies, I don't have a good example of survey building and research findings. I do, however, know how to build surveys and gain insights. I've done it in a few projects, but not in three case studies I've outlined. Instead of writing a fourth case study just for the survey portion, I'm going to write a micro case study focused on the problem of needing to find user feedback, mass user feedback. The creation and distribution of a survey will be what I'm going to showcase. I'll document my thoughts in putting that survey together, the results that we received, and the insights we gained. Uh, additionally, I'll in in include what I learned in the process of creating a survey, just a traditional case study outline, and that's it. It's a real quick glimpse with actual data and insights to showcase my ability to build and distribute surveys. Now, when my future design manager comes along and checks out my three case studies, and let's say they notice that I didn't hit on a step that they were looking for, hopefully I have it covered in my micro case studies. The micro case study approach is meant to complement your primary case studies. Admittedly, this does enable the designer with more work under their belt, uh, more so than the new recruit right out of school. But as anyone starts to gain experience, document it. Document what you can and build micro case studies out as part of this project. In the coming months, I'm gonna be putting together a portfolio for myself, again, for the first time in over five years, something I've wanted to challenge myself to do. In outlining my work, I recognize that in my three case studies I intend to write, they will be missing key pieces like customer journey maps or surveys or a few other things. But I have done all those things and with great success too. Therefore, I wanna showcase them in my micro format to help my future employer recognize that there is skill there. Micro case studies, you heard it here first. Shoot me a message or leave a comment wherever we engage online and let me know what you think. We'll see you next time.